What's up guys, Richard here, and today I'm going to show you the uh, Legend World Zodiac deck that I entered with for the Buddy Fight Grand Fest Regional Tournament. So, uh, I did pretty well in that tournament, even though it was my first regional Buddy Fight Regional Tournament I ever participated in. I went 4-3, which was not bad, uh, considering the deck I'm playing. Um, uh, yeah, I'll just get right into it. I had a lot of fun playing that tournament, so... Before I get started, so every essential buddy fight deck needs life counter. So we got ball on the cover, get our life there. You know, if I'm not using this, I'm using my phone app. You guys already seen that before. Uh, our flag, we're, uh, we're doing the legend build variant for uh, Zodiac because that build is more consistent and just really abusive. And uh, for our buddy, we've got a star deity dragon Zodiac. So uh, we got the Buddy Rare version here for our Buddy. Uh, Zodiac's skill is, uh, his call cost is you pay 2 gauge, and after you pay the 2 gauge, you pick uh, 2 cards from your drop and put it in the soul, meaning that you can use the cards from your gauge and still put it in the soul afterwards because it has the then clause, not and. So uh, Zodiac, uh, he has two abilities. Uh, his ability is based on what flag you have. Uh, if your flag is Legend World, he can hit all star units. There's a little attribute there. So where is it? He's a star and a neo dragon. So all star units gain 3k and uh, penetrate, or 3k and zodiac gains penetrate. And uh, yeah, and then if you have uh, if your flag is star dragon world, uh, he gains move. Yeah, and plus one crit. That's really important. The plus one crit. So I like penetrate because we have a lot of size 3 metas with big soul and big walls, so that's really helpful. And uh, he has soul guard, meaning if you have cards in your soul, you can use them to protect himself. And most importantly is his well-known gravity rest. So it's, uh, whenever your opponent plays a, places a card onto their board, onto their center left or right, you can pay a gate, discard a card from your hand, and rest it. Meaning that it's just rested, it can't attack for the turn. So it me messes with impact monsters, messes with cards, monsters like boss way, double attack, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, really good card. So because Zodiac is our buddy, we're running four copies of him. This is the triple rare art, which is really beautiful. So same skill, same card. Yeah, running four copies of the triple R. Next up, we're running another version of Zodiac. We have four copies of Zodiac ES, which is a really great card against like really offensive decks like Dragon World and Katana World. Not Oni Assassins though. Oni Assassins is just, oh my god, it's so difficult to play against OC. Oni Assassins for me. I'm really new to this game, so I don't have a lot of experience with games playing Oni Assassins. But I had to play it once and it was really hard. Uh, call cost, pay, same call cost, pay to gauge, then pick a card from your drop, put in the soul. Uh, ES is really special because he has move regardless of what flag you have. And uh, his skill is not dependent on what you flag you have basically at all. So. ES's skill is this, this, this is basically Mega Colony. You, when it attacks, on attack, you pick one of your opponent's size 2 or less monsters and it can't stand at the beginning of their next uh, stand phase. So that's great. And he also has Gravity Rest. Same skill. Uh, pay Gauge, uh, discard one from your hand, and they stun a card. So this is really good against offensive decks. I can, if they're, my opponent is playing with Ball Soleil, I can call the card to the side, so that way they can't kill it while I'm swinging at them. And yeah, really good card. Uh, lastly, I oh, didn't put that away. Lastly, I have the one copy of High Eliminator, High Eliminator Zodiac. So what happened was, I know there's a new Zodiac that came out, the Space Distortion Dragon Zodiac If I actually have it here. Uh, the reason I'm not putting it in this deck for files is because I'm showing you guys what I entered with, and I didn't get the, I didn't get my ifs until the middle of the tournament, meaning I couldn't just switch out my deck because, you know, that'd be cheating. So, uh, but I still, I'll be doing a later version, an updated version of my deck. I just wanted to show you guys what I entered with, with in uh, Grand Fest. So, so, this is Zodiac is only a one of because his call cause is kind of meh and his ability is like just on place. So it doesn't do really anything for the rest of the game, for the rest of the game. So it's call cost, pay two, then pick a card from your hand and put in the soul, send of your drop zones. That means you're losing hand. But his uh, ability is nice because when he's placed, it just kills two of your opponent's gauge because you have a Legend World flag. If you have a Star Dragon World flag, it deals two damage. So the kill two gauge is really important because that's less things your opponent can do the next turn that they might not be prepared for. So I had a game where I was playing against, a, I was playing in a mirror match against another Zodiac player, and this was my only Zodiac I could call for the first turn. 
and I just popped it down and I killed two of his gauge. So that means he had to work harder to get his gauge to pay for his zodiacs as well. And since I had drag solar, the minute it died, I could just bring it back and then do the same thing, kill off two gauge. And speaking of drag solar, that's the next card we'll go into. So this is size twos. So for size twos, I am running Meteor Arms Drag Solar. It's the only size two in the whole deck. This whole deck is centered around Zodiac being the size three and the main focus of the deck. And the reason this works is because Drag Solar's effect is just when it's been at Drag Solar's pay, placed, I call I call a Neo Dragon or Star, basically a size three Neo Dragon or Star, basically going to be Zodiac because it's the only size three we have in the deck. And I can call it by paying its call cost. So I can so I'm basically being Grand Blue right here, I'm playing Drag Solar, calling Zodiac from the drop zone if it died, and then calling it back. So what's great about Drag Solar is that I'm basically running an additional four copies of any Zodiac that's in my drop zone. So even though I only have one uh, High Eliminator, I'm essentially running five because if this dies or it somehow ends up in my drop zone, which is actually really easy to do, I can I still have four more copies to probably see it again. Same goes for the other Zodiacs. I can have, basically I'm running more copies of this. Other great effect is because Drag Solar stays in the soul or goes into the soul after it's called. And then Drag Solar's effect is that when it's in the soul of a Neo Dragon, uh, it's just on attack, discard and draw. So like I said, there's a, it's really easy to get cards into your drop zone because there's a lot of drop and draw abilities in this deck. So you get on, I'm going to have a lot of on attack, discard one, draw, and if I have double attack then I can do it twice because it's, this ability is not once per turn. Uh, size ones. We're running two copies of uh, Leo Star Sentinel Leon. So this card's great because if I have a star monster, if I no, if my buddy monster is a star, the size is reduced by one. This card, so it basically becomes a size zero just because I have this card as my buddy. Just because it's there as my buddy, I, it's just basically becomes a size zero, which is really awesome. So it's essentially a size zero. It's got a 4 one, one four really nice stat. And this Zodiac gives 3, 3k to every star. And since this is a star attribute, it gets plus three. So it's swinging for seven, which is a really good attack. That's like Bots' attack. Uh, and what's also great about Leon is that it filters gauge. So it's counter, kill itself. So put it in the drop zone and put the top two cards in your gauge. What's really great about this card is that it's counter mean that you can do it during your opponent's turn. So if they're like, all right, attack Leon. All right, Leon's counter, kill itself, get two gauge, the attack misses. Or let's say for some odd reason, I have Zodiac ES on the right and I put Leon in the center and they go attack your center. All right, well, Leon kill itself first and then get two gauge, your attack misses. Yes, in buddy fight, you can you can whiff attacks. Attacks can miss if the, tar if the target disappears. Uh, yeah, it's just basically there to gain gauge and also just have a nice 7k attack if I'm sitting on the original Zodiac. Alright, size zeros, because this deck needs a lot of size zeros. We're running four copies of Nebulosa. Nebulosa is a great card because what it does is when it's in the soul of a Zodiac, that Zodiac gains double attack. Which is really nice because if you're sitting on a, a Star Deity Dragon Zodiac, double attack would penetrate. Really good, and since uh, Zodiac gains plus three to the front row, or th not three front row, th plus three to all the stars, it's a 10k beater with two crit penetrate swinging twice, which is really nice. And uh, he also has cross knives, meaning that if you just call it, pay in its call cost, you just move it into Zodiac's soul, and then that works. Uh, and because uh, Zodiac's call cost is put is uh, put a card from your drop into its soul, if this is in your drop, you can just call this from the call cost, put Nebulosa in the soul and you immediately have double attack. And if you have Drag Solar, you pay a call cost, call Zodiac, Zodiac's call cost, put Nebulosa in the soul. So now you, just with Nebulosa alone, you uh, you have, uh, I'm sorry, because of Drag Solar alone, you have, uh, you have a Zodiac with 7k attack, two crit penetrate, on attack, drop and draw, and double attack. So that's the ideal setup right here, is to have this soul going for Zodiac. So that's why Nebulosa is a really good card. Ideally, I want to see it in my drop zone so I can make it easier to put it in the soul for Zodiac's call cost. Next up for size is another really great card. We're running four copies of Valkyrie All-Knowing all it all So all it alls effect is that uh, the first effect is not really that important. It's when you cast uh, 
cards you cast a great spell cannot be nullified, but we don't... The only uh, great spell we have, I believe, is in the sideboard. No, wrong. That's not a great spell. It's just Brethren Guard. So yeah, reading's hard. So the first skill doesn't matter. The important skill is the bottom one, which is when this is discarded from your hand, you put the top card in your gauge and draw a card. So a lot of cards in this deck, like I said, do drop and draws. So if you discard this from your hand to draw, you then activate all of all's ability. Gauge, draw. So with all of all being discarded, you get another card in your hand. And also, because Gravity Rest requires a discard, you can pay a gauge, discard all with all, then get a gauge back and draw, meaning you can pay the cost for Gravity Rest again. So this just gives you more resources and more hand. It's a really great card. And it's a size zero, so you can call it if you feel like doing that. Why is Legend World so great? All right, next up for the size zero is another really great card. We're running four copies of Chaos Blade Joker. So Chaos Blade is a dual card. He's an Asgard, Dragon, Enemy, Demon Lord. Uh, so... Chaos's ability, his call cost is really huge, but that's not important. We're never going to pay 3 gauge to call him, because his ability is that when he's discarded from hand, see we got a lot of things that discard from hand, uh, you can pay 1 life to call him back. We're, we're basically being Grand Blue here. And then his effect is when he's placed, um, when he's just called, uh, you pick a card on your field and give it a crit. You know who we want to give crits to? Ah, now 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 it's a now it's a 10k with three crit with double attack and yeah that's really great and penetrate. So if you do that, call twice, you can give it four crit. It's just it just makes you gives your opponent a lot of pressure because you're just stacking crits and you're ending the game faster. Really great card, four of. And lastly, the bane of Gabe's existence, Loki the Air Guys. So this card is just great because even though it has no crit. Uh, he has 5k defense, which is really, really high for a size 0. And then, his effect, more importantly, is just when he's placed, you pick all the cards, you pick all the soul from a card on your opponent's field and put it in the drop zone. So it doesn't matter if it's a monster, an item, a spell, an impact, it's just place, pick all the soul of a card, they put it in the drop zone. So it just eliminates soul immediately. So, you know how Dragon's Y has all those cards that have Soul Guard and have like a bunch of soul like Dimension and Ball Soleil? Mostly Dimension. You just place this, all that soul is gone. It's great. Uh, I'm only running two of it to because in the main deck because for most match, ev not every single matchup is going to require Soul Guard and especially Oni Assassins. Uh, Loki helps Oni Assassins because removing soul helps them with Ambush. So it's only a two of for specific matchups, but because you're discarding and drawing and discarding and drawing so much, you can run into him pretty easily. All right, now we're gonna go on to our spells. So we're running uh, four copies of Future Astrology. We're running the good art. I don't really care. I just like this art better. There's no real good or bad art, it's just preference. So uh, Future Astrology, uh, you can only cast this card once per turn. It has two effects. So even though it has two effects, you only use once, and you can only use it once per turn. So the first effect is uh, if you have a star on your field, you pay a gauge for its call cost, for its, yeah, its cast cost. Uh, you pay a gauge. If you have a star on your field, you draw a card. If you have a Neo Dragon on your field, you draw a card. And because every single Zodiac, let me pull one up real quick, sorry. So you see how we got Zodiacs that have star and Neo Dragon? That means you can do both. So, if you got this in your center, cast this, you draw because you have a star, you draw again because you have a Neo Dragon. So this is just a, basically an, another nice one. Pay a gauge, draw two. His other effect is counter. Uh, during this turn, your flag is regarded as Legend and Star Dragon World. So that means you could take advantage of both of Zodiac's abilities. So, if you want it, the, the move isn't as important, but or sometimes, depending on your matchup, but you can count because it's counter you can cast this during your battle phase and because zodiac gains a crit if you have star dragon world you'll you'll have a crit so now you'll have penetrate and an additional crit and then combine that with uh with joker you'll have four crit so you can use this to help push for game because four crit double attack is really good especially with penetrate so yeah, definitely a four of. This is mo mostly you're going to be using this for the draws, so you can get more cards in hand because you discard a lot, especially for gravity rest. 
and you need to go through the deck to find stuff you need you need faster. So we're base we're playing OTT Grand Blue Mega Colony. Uh, next up for our spells, we're running. Oh, sorry, budge the camera. We're running four copies of Divine Guidance. Divine Guidance is your nullifier for Zodiac. Um, yeah, basically, if you have a Zodiac on your field when your opponent attacks, uh, you nullify the attack, put the top card to your gauge, gain a life. So you gain gauge, gain life, and it doesn't matter if Zodiac's in your center or not. If you just have a Zodiac on your field and your opponent attacks you during their turn, you can nullify an attack. Next up, we're running four copies of Illusion of the Void Deity. So this card is similar to Divine Guidance, except instead of it being uh, nullifying attacks, it's just the next time your Zodiac would be, or your size three monster would be destroyed, uh, you can prevent its destruction, uh, or not prevent its destruction. You gain a life and the card just stays on the field. So the next time it would be destroyed, it just stays on the field instead. Meaning if you take Penetrate, if you're, the thing that's attacking is Penetrate, you still take the Penetrate, but because you gain a life with this card, you'll you can just reduce the crit that they're penetrating by one. And yeah, it's just it's just another like shield protector in a way. It's really good against Balsalay because if they go uh, pop, I use Balsalay's effect, you go counter, prevent destruction, I heal. So that's helpful. Uh, because I didn't get any more, Zod I didn't get my Zodiac ifs on time for the tournament, I ran three copies of Uninvited Deity Inspector. Uh, inspectors, because if you don't see a Zodiac, your deck bricks. So if you, the whole deck revolves around Zodiac. So what this does, this spell, is you pay two life and you search your deck for a Zodiac and call it paying its call cost. So this allows you to search for any Zodiac you want. Uh, the two life doesn't make that big a deal because you can heal with the with the uh, destruction prevention with uh, Illusion Void Deity and Divine Guidance. And... Uh, it's just, this is just basically, you're considered running more Zodiacs in your deck. What I did, what I'm going to be doing is just take two out and maybe put in two more uh, just ifs. Because in the, same, in the same sense, I'm still running more ifs. I still like to keep, I would probably still keep the one Inspector just so I can search for any Zodiac I want for a specific matchup. And also deck thing is a thing. So yeah, that's a good card to have. Next up for good cards, we have two copies of Darkness Rune. Darkness Rune is a great card because it's a dual card. Uh, it's kind of similar to Future Astrology. It has three abilities, but you can only use uh, one of the following three when you cast it. It's Pay Life Counter, so you can either put the top two cards of your deck into your gauge. You can send one soul card from your opponent's field in a drop, so if I don't have Loki, I can use this to pick out one soul. Or I can uh, destroy a size one or less monster in my opponent's field. So. Like, if you guys saw in that one video I was playing against Gibbs and he was why, he called Star Remnant. And then I, right when he called it, before we could call another monster, I uh, used Darkness Rune to kill it because counters can counter stuff. So, no more Remnant means really bad for Neo's why. It means they have to pay more call costs. Alright, that's it for the spells. Uh, lastly, keep budging the camera, my bad. We're running four copies of Jim Gimir. G Jymir or Gimir's Staff. So this staff is really important for the deck. You really want to see this. If you see the staff, you want to play it immediately as you can. So what this staff does is you pay a life and you pay gauge to equip it. So you equip it to your flag. Uh, it has two abilities. You can use both. You can use both if you want to. It doesn't say one or the other. Uh, the first ability is you can rest it. I mean, it has no stats, so you're not going to attack with it. And also, Zodiac is in your center, so it doesn't matter. You're not going to be swinging at your center anyways. So you can rest it, put the top created card in your gauge. So it's just rest, gain a gauge. Kind of like how in uh, Force of Will, you rest your uh, J ruler to gain a, a thingy, a mana, whatever it's called, a will. And uh, so that's nice. And its other ability is just... Say you're activating its thing, discard a card from your hand, draw. So this is what helps you get more drop and draws during your turn and filter through your deck. So you can go discard, draw. Maybe it's all at all. Charge, draw. I need more gauge. Rest, gain a gauge. It's just resource. It just gives you resources what this card's main focus is. So this thing is really, really helpful to set up for turns. All right, that was the main deck. We're going to go into the side deck. For my side deck, because I actually have one, like Gabe and Miles, like I have it prepared. Uh, 
two more copies of Loki, the air guy. So, and if I'm ever running, if I'm playing against Gabe, I'm gonna run all four copies of Loki in my main deck because I just like to mess with them. Uh, really good against uh, Prism Dragons. They don't have that one spell that prevents it from being removed from the soul. I forgot what it was called. And yeah, it's just really good against like size three focused decks. Yeah, so I want to run more Lokis. Uh, next up, this is a really important card uh, for the Jackknife matchup. It's uh, two copies of Media Arms Vyshal. So Vyshal's ability is that when it's in the soul, uh, the abilities of this card of the field cannot be nullified, and the abilities of a Neo Dragon that this card is in the soul of can't be nullified. So what really sucks is that Zodiac has Penetrate and Soul Guard. So if my opponent is, let's say, Jackknife, and Jackknife decks have uh, the Style of Justice, I believe it's called Dra Dragon Force card, which nullifies all your card abilities, meaning I lose Penetrate and Soul Guard. So even though I have that big soul, they'll just kill it in one shot. And also, losing Penetrate is a really big deal because that's how this that's how Zodiac really gets damage in, is with Penetrate. So if I have Vaishul in the soul, I can make sure I still keep all my abilities. I'm only running two copies because uh, Drag Solar makes it easy to put stuff back into my soul from the drop. So once I see this card in my drop, I basically have access to it for a majority of the whole game. So really good tech to have in my sideboard. Next up, I am running two copies, more copies of Darkness Rune. Uh, I really haven't had a reason to keep two. I might drop it down to one, put in another Vaishal or something else. Uh, maybe another like Brethren Guard or something, uh, because typically the pay pay a life to get stuff kind of sucks later when your life's getting too low. Killing off size ones is not really that big a deal in a lot of the meta right now, and the kill off one soul is kind of nice. But you know, it's like the two copies in the main deck works fine. I haven't had a reason to run all four, so I had a reason to maybe put in the one extra. So I might just drop it down, but for the tournament I ran two, just to see what I ran, what I played up against, and maybe if I wanted to run four, I might have. So, I'm new to this game, remember. Keep budging the camera, sorry. Two copies of Brethren Guard. Brethren Guard's great, because uh, even though the, call, the cast cost is two gauge, which is a lot, you nullify one of your opponents, you can nullify your opponent's spell, or destroy a spell on the field. So if you're playing against Dragon World, and they attack, and they go... Dragon Shield! You just go, no, and nullify their Dragon Shield. So, that's cool. You can also nullify spells. You just nullify spells. It's a really good card. Yeah, so sideboard it in case you play against worlds that depend on their spells. And lastly, two copies of Fenrir, Curse of Anergan. Yes, Buddy Fight has their own Fenrir. They did it first. So, this card's actually really fun because... Uh, his call cost is you need to have uh, Asgard's if you want to play him. And we are actually running in our main deck for a 10 Asgard's because these are all Asgard attribute mon monsters. So you, during your final phase, you can declare final phase, choose an Asgard from your field, probably going to be Joker because you called it out to give Zodiac a crit, put it back in your hand, then call Vanergan. So you're probably going to kill off your sold sold up Zodiac, but if you're going to win the turn, it's great. So his, his call cost is pay 3 gauge. You have a lot of gauge, so it's not that big a deal. And return the Asgard to your hand. And his ability is counter. Uh, during your final phase, you can discard two Legend World cards. The whole deck is Legend World, so just discard two cards from your hand, and you can stand this card. So you attack, and then discard two, restand it. And because Joker has a discard ability, so if you go, okay, attack your center for three crit, all right, ability, discard two, restand, you can use Joker's ability, pay a life, call it, give a crit to Vanergan. Then you can have Alwadol's ability to gain a gauge and draw another card. So you can have another card in your hand for the discard two. So you can swing for four crit, discard two Legend World cards, restand, attack for four crit. So this is like your game pusher. Like, if you want to. It's in the sideboard because Zodiac is pretty good at finishing the game on his own because of Penetrate being consistent. But if I'm playing against a deck that's, like, really good in the late game and I just want to rush in early and just deal them a bunch of damage, Vanergan's really helpful. I might drop another Darkness Rune to run another Vanergan so that way uh, I can see it more likely. Because the two copies does suck because if I see one in my drop zone, I lost it for the rest of the game. So my only hope is to hopefully draw into it. And if it's in my gauge, I might be living on false hopes, hoping that it's still in my deck when it's in my gauge the whole time. 
So I might run, put it up to three copies. That was my Legend World Zodiac deck. I hope you all enjoy it. I love this game. I love this deck. It's a lot of fun. You guys should really try playing getting into Buddy Fight. It's a really fun game. I know a lot of locals don't support it or don't play it. I know a lot of people have like childish views towards it because of its uh, the way it's cartoony and meme-y in the anime. So other than that, it's a really, really consistent game. And yeah, I play Mega Colony OTT Grand Blue. Have fun with that. This is Richard, and I'll see you all next time.